that a fish? Oh, that's a fish. I think we hooked him. And this reel does not like this. What's going on everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. All the BFF members, welcome back. And if you're not a BFF member, go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me. Turn it gray, turn on the post notifications, that little ding dong bell right there. Hit that, you're probably gonna wanna do that. That just notifies you anytime I drop a new video. Um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and smash the like on this one because you see this right here? Nope, not even gonna need it. Probably shouldn't throw that actually. Okay, so we're not gonna need this rod and reel. Actually, today we're gonna do a little bit of a challenge. We're gonna do a vintage reel challenge, but not like what you're thinking. I'm not gonna be throwing an ambassador. Shout out to the people who still throw the ambassador reels. Um, but what are you doing? They got low profile reels now. We're not saltwater fishing or catfishing. What are you doing? The reel I'm gonna be throwing, oh yeah, it's right there. You see that? We're gonna be throwing a 1970s model pocket fisherman by Papel. There was actually a remake in the early 2000s by Ronco, the pocket fisherman. It's gotta be one of the craziest things ever. Uh, I mean, just check out the commercial. It's the fishing invention of the century. There's never been anything like it. Popeil's Pocket Fisherman. Anyone who ever goes fishing should own a pocket fisherman. Compact enough to fit inside glove compartments. Lunch boxes, backpacks. It's rod, reel, line, bobber, and hook. With a Johnson reel and twin flex rod that reacts to the slightest nibble, yet strong enough to haul in the big ones. Exactly. So we're going to be fishing with that today. I am going to bring the big rod, but we're probably not going to use it. Um, it's just going to be on the back just in case something goes wrong with this guy. I did have to restring it. I got it off eBay. If you're looking for crazy stuff like this, go to eBay. They have everything. This thing actually came with the original manual. It came with a little carrying pouch that you put on your belt, which is what I did. We're gonna get out on the water. We're gonna try to land some fish. I'll uh, clue y'all in more when I get out there. Let's go. All right, folks, so we're on the water and uh, we're gonna try to catch some little fishies. So let's whip out our old handy dandy pocket fisherman out of this here pocket. And uh, yeah, this little plastic piece is probably gonna get super annoying. Basically, we're gonna take it, we're gonna lock our reel into play or our rod into place. We've got two little eyelets, they do have a little bit of give. Basically, it's a Zebco inside here. I mean, it's all locks down. Let's get it all nice and locked down. But here's our little button to press to cast. Actually cast pretty decent. And uh, from what I can assume, uh, we just pray to God we don't hook anything large. If we hook something large, that's definitely gonna be a fight. I've got a little Texas rig with a little 16th ounce weight, uh, tungsten weight, a little two aught wide gap hook. And we're going to be throwing some shaky tails. It's my favorite worm to fish in here. It's got a nice little curl tail. The 16th ounce weight is gonna let that thing just flutter, let that tail just flutter as it goes down. We're gonna see if we can't catch a couple fish on the old Papel's Pocket Fisherman. Obviously my casting is not gonna be very far. I mean, look at the, the whip on this thing. It's not, just not there. Um, so yeah about that well here we go here's the first send oh that's going to take some getting used to i launched it like straight up in the air yeah this is going to be super easy to fish texas rigged <laughs> this is so dumb how am i supposed to feel if i have a fish on oh i don't know i don't know how you're supposed to get any action on this thing the other fun part is if I get the thing caught up, usually, you know, you get the rod tip and you go straight down until you, uh, mm, I don't know. That's how we're going to fish it. So y'all may have seen when I fish a worm, I kind of pop and pull, pop, pull, pop, pull, pop, pull. That ain't gonna happen with this one. I'm just gonna have to pull. The Papel Pocket Fisherman. For the angler on the go. 
I mean, how goofy do I look? I mean, be honest. Let me know in the comments right now. How goofy does this look? You know, I used to catch a whole lot of grief on my channel about setting the hook. Well, if y'all thought I couldn't set the hook with a seven foot rod, just wait till you see me with this, this one. Oh. We got a little guy on the pocket fisherman. How about that, folks? On the pocket fisherman. He is a little fella. He hit that on the fall because I threw out here in the middle. Come here, let me see your mouth. Mm -hmm. A little buck bass. But hey, we did it on the old 1970s vintage pocket fisherman. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, we're going to let this little one go. Uh, he looks to be pretty healthy. Um, so, Chris, I think what we're doing is working here, bud. I'm going to let you go. Later, little guy. I'm going to tell you one thing I need to be careful of. My hand's getting wet on this plastic. Um, they make the rods ends cork and foam for a reason because it's better, it's easier to grip when your hands are wet. Uh, this plastic, if I hook into something decent in here, which we've got a couple in here that'll uh, put up a little bit of a fight. Could be in some trouble. If you didn't think rods made a difference, I'm going to tell you right now. They do. But the sensitivity of the rod is uh, crucial in situations like this, especially when you're worm fishing, because you need to feel that little thump that the fish have it, and you definitely cannot with this. Come on, little fish, come out and play. You know you want to. And even if you don't, I do. I want you to come out and play. I've been waiting all day for this. Oh, that's a fish. They drop it. I think we hooked him. Yep, we hooked him. He's gonna be a little one. And this reel does not like this. He's pulling the boat a little bit. He's a little guy. He's better than the last one, but he's a little guy. Oh, there we go. You ate the whole thing. Bruh, you ate the whole thing. Yeah, you're going to be uh, close to being gut hooked. There. No blood whatsoever. Fish is going to be okay. A little bit of gut hooked. He's a tagged fish, too. I didn't even notice that. What number are you? 1031. 1031 looks a little spawned out, but nonetheless, he's healthy. 1031. I wonder where you came from. We're going to look that up. Remember that, guys. 1031. We're going to see what day we tagged him. Nice little fish. We're going to let him go. He's probably, I'm going to say, three quarters of a pound. So we're getting better. We've uh, improved. Sorry about the little gut hook there, bud. We're going to let you go. There he goes. Swims off. I don't want to catch no five pounder on this thing for sure. That was an upgrade, but um, no, no five pounders. Let's all thank modern technology that we don't have to use little wimpy small rods like this, that we've got those nice graphite rods that the tips are so sensitive and you can feel everything in the water. You can feel those little nibbles, not only for our sake, because we the hookup ratio goes way, way up when you do that, when you can feel that stuff, um, but for the fish's sake, because like that guy was gut hooked, um, luckily, he was not bleeding when I let him go. Typically, if you hook a fish gut hooked and they were bleeding out of their mouth or gills, for the most part, they're probably a goner. Um, some of them can survive, but a lot of times they uh, they end up going belly up. That guy's just going to have a sore throat, though. He's a uh, he's going to be a okay. I like that cast. That's one of them high probability casts. I feel like I'm on one of them like tuna boats. Really in pull back. Wicked tuna. We got a little guy. Not sure that. The re there as we go. And the reel stopped working for a minute. Right in that new structure. Yep. 
you're also a little gut hooked. There you go, a little guy. And this brand new tree stuff we got going on here. Oh, I don't know how me and Chris are gonna fix this. I don't think we do, honestly. Um, I think this is just here now. Anyway, there you go. Another little fish, it's number three on the old uh, pocket fisherman. Bye little guy. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content of me fishing with the pocket fisherman, go ahead, smash the like button. Leave me a comment below on what you would do if you had one of these things because, well, if you made it to the end of this video, you might as well be a BFF. You might as well be, be a bee fishing family member. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button because if you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment below, I'm giving one away. Not that one because that's the 70s model, but the early 2000s model I mentioned at the first of the video, yeah, I've got a brand new one in the box. I'm going to ship it to you. All you got to do is those three things, and I'm going to do that. Now that we're losing light at the end of the day, we got three fish, so it was a successful mission, but my goodness, we gut hooked two of them because you just can't feel those fish on that, that rod. Thank goodness for technology and ingenuity, those graphite rods, God, you gotta love them. Um, you can actually whale on those fish, set the hook on them and actually land them in, you know, through the, through the lips like you're supposed to. I'm gonna get out of here. I hope y'all guys enjoyed it. We're gonna start doing more stuff like this, challenge videos, giveaway videos, and uh, stay tuned. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.